Bronx and the latest on the search for a guy who viciously stabbed two people inside a laundromat, killing one of them. Video showing cops removing two meat cleavers from the scene. The violence rattling customers at the laundromat who tells us that more needs to be done to keep the customers safe. Eyewitness News reporter Anthony Carlo live in the Claremont section where the laundromat remains closed as cops continue to investigate. Anthony. Well, Mike, that's right. The laundromat remains the center of a criminal investigation. Very active, by the way. We just saw a couple of detectives leave moments ago. This deadly stabbing is no doubt shocking, but apparently from speaking with residents, it's only the latest incident of crime, quality of life concerns, and outright unruliness that plagues not only this business, but this intersection. Like something straight out of a horror movie, police recovered two meat cleavers from the laundromat steps. This intersection, when bad things have happened, they've happened here. Police swarmed College Avenue and East 170th Street early Thursday morning after a man entered the 303 laundromat carrying shirts and then carrying out carnage. Police say he stabbed two men inside the wild attack reinforcing concerns Davina already had. I me mean, as a female, I don't feel safe me washing the, washing my kids' clothes, washing my clothes, and me coming at night and there's a bunch of like you know people that do drugs, sleeping, bent over, no, like nobody want to see those things, you know. Those things are happening right inside. Here. Yeah, right inside in the corner, everywhere. Surveillance video appears to show at least one of the victims being removed from the laundromat on a stretcher at around three in the morning. Police say one man was stabbed in the legs, the torso, and the back. He died. The other was stabbed in the back but survived. The laundromat closed for the day. The inconvenience discouraging for customers. They broke everything. I don't know what happened. Police sources say the surviving victim told cops he's homeless and that he and his friend were sleeping inside the laundromat when the man attacked them, killing his friend. The devastating crime also exposing quality of life concerns that already existed. The people inside, they, they sleep. Come here, sleeping. Two more, Papa. And right now, the motive is unclear. Why this man went on a stabbing rampage inside of the oh, laundromat uh, is unclear right now. Also, part of this investigation, whether or not the suspect knew the victims or if this was random. Right now, police are looking for a man about five foot eight, 140 pounds, last seen wearing a black and green shirt and a black and white hat. We're live in the Claremont section of the Bronx. Anthony Carlo, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Anthony, so, thank um, you. All praise to the Most High. How about Shim Yahushai, by Shim and and double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching this truth. And Shalom to the hopeful elect, the Shabbat Atajwan from the Great Millstone. Here in St. Louis, we're going to do a short lesson right on a news clip that we saw uh, in the beginning uh, about this laundromat stabbing right in uh in the bronx all right and that's really like my hometown my 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 area actually where i grew up um so i'm i'm familiar with the surroundings and the area itself okay and so when i saw the story and uh the elder brother in uh new york from uh, gms watchman did a video on it and so you know <clears throat> i'm just gonna land back off of that brother's video and um, go into a little commentary myself and pull a few scriptures, all right, because our job as watchmen is to give a report, all right, on the things that we see from the various news outlets, right, to give warning to Israel, all right, that <clears throat> these current times that we're in are most likely the last of the last days. And so you see all of these different types of outbreaks uh, going on, all right? And the Most High is pouring out judgment, all right? And that's the purpose of the, of the video is to never lose sight of the fact that the Most High, all right, the how about Shem Shai is beginning, right, to uh, increase the events of judgment against Israel, all right? So without further ado, we'll get a couple of scriptures and we'll be done. This is Zephaniah 3 and 5. And it reads, the just Lord, Yahweh, is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning doeth he, do he bring his judgment to light. 
He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame, right? And so you're going to have these incidences that look like they're random, okay? But it is the Most High who's doing this, right? Because he's pouring out those spirits to come and um, influence these people, all right? To do the things that they're, they, they're doing out here. All right, now this particular guy um, had a, what, a couple of cleavers and a knife, all right, and stabbed up, and one died, stabbed up a couple of people in, in the laundromat at about, what, 3 o'clock in the morning, all right? So <clears throat> it behooves those out there, right, that you have to be very, very cautious and careful of your surroundings, Okay. Um, it's the first that I've ever heard. Now, I'm, I'm sure nowadays they do that type of thing, but when I was a kid coming up, you didn't have all-night laundromats. Okay, so this happened at 3 o'clock in the morning. All right? But it just goes to show you, okay, that the Lord can can do some, <laughs> do some horrible things, man, like behind that evil. You know, the Lord has already warned through his men that I'm going to put a, uh, a great deal of evil and judgment in the earth, man, and starting particularly with my own people, all right? And in that part of the Bronx, is Claremont, it's called the Claremont section, all right, which is uh, basically like the south side of the, what's called the, the Grand Concourse, all right, uh, at 170th Street, okay, uh, as it was reported in the piece, and that's not a well-to-do area, okay? Got a lot of Jake there, a lot of Latino there, okay? Um, so you're going to start to see more reports, all right, of, of many a Jake being being judged by Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, all right? And so what you had was a spirit jump on a man to... To what? Bring judgment against those other two and, and unto himself. All right? So, you know, this is something that we, we deal with on a weekly basis when we, we see these judgments. We sometimes bring them out, right? And put the scriptures to them. It's Ecclesiasticus 39, and let's just read 28. And it reads, There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Right? And who is the he that made these spirits? It is Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Okay? Going on to verse uh, 29, it reads, Fire and hell and famine and death, all these are created for vengeance. Right? So the Lord brings vengeance through all these different ways. Okay? All right? Verse 30, teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. All right, and that's what you saw was evil, an evil spirit jump on a man and punish two others, man, and one to destruction. You see, they have rejoiced in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth, right? That they are the spirits that the Lord has created. When need is, and when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word, right? So these spirits are listening to the Heavenly Father, and they will carry out exactly what their orders are, all right? And that is the wrath and the judgment of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai on basically three souls, all right? Well, they got to catch the guy who did it, all right, if, if he gets caught, but two for certain. All right, all right, because one was uh, dead on the scene, I think, or died at the hospital once they got him there. All right, Deuteronomy 32 and 39, it says, See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me, right? I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So once the Lord has set a judgment, there's nobody that can get that soul out of it. You see? That judgment is going to be brought forth. 
This is Amos 9 and 10. It reads, all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. And incidentally, in this particular case, what? That man used the sword. He used a knife. Okay? The sword can be many different different things. But in this, this particular case, the man actually used the hand sword. Right? He used the knife. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. So as to the reason why the Lord had that man threw a spirit on that man to go in there and do what he did, hey, as it says, all the sinners of my people, those that refuse to repent, right? Those whom the Lord has already written out their story, right? To receive whatever judgment that pleases him. Okay. Let me see. Do I want to start up here? Uh, no, we'll start right there, verse 10. All right, Jeremiah 6, 10. It says, To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, his ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot salak him. Let me read that again. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord Yahweh is a, unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it, right? And that's how people who refuse to repent, right? Who are tarrying and waiting, okay? Until they think that they're going to come up with their own time to begin to listen to the Lord. Well, you may not have a lot of time on this earth, right? Because the Lord may judge you first before you actually make up your mind. If it were that easy. All right. But the prophets were sent. Right. To tell Israel to repent. And as it says here, their ears are uncircumcised. Right. They can't hear the word. They can't hear the understanding. They can't get the understanding of these scriptures. All right. And so because of that, they will not listen. Right. And they hate the word of the Lord. Ultimately, that's why in their own minds, they won't repent. But it's really the Lord blocking them from receiving the word. Okay. But nonetheless, the Lord sent the prophets to tell them the words. Okay. And our people just refuse. Two thirds of our people just refuse. Okay. To hear the words of the Lord coming from the men that he sent. See. See. Because they don't like the package that it's wrapped in. Our people rather go to a, a dead place such as a church and listen to the same old lies and rhetoric by Pastor Porkchop. Okay? they rather listen to that. All right? Because that's more tantalizing to them. All right? Because everything is a show. And because the real men of the Lord... Okay, are actually out on the highways and hedges and on the street and, you know, wear these garments. They won't hearken unto the word, right? Because they think, what, these guys are, are crazy uh, or they're bums or, or whatever it is that they think. Okay, but that's really the Lord not giving them the spirit or the understanding. Okay, the Lord is blocking them. And so many or two-thirds of our people are set for judgment. We'll get one more and we'll end it, all right? <clears throat> because we do preach this word, right? Particularly with the men of Great Millstone, starting with our head apostles, elders, and bishops, on down to all the younger brothers, okay? Right? We do it, what, to the, in hopes that we could uh, uh, win them, if you will, to Mashiach, all right, to Yahweh Shai. Okay, so what do we do? We we hope to persuade men. 2 Corinthians 5 and 11, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. You see, the terror, the Lord is a terror, okay? <clears throat> As the Christians try to tell you, God is all love. Well, not according to this scripture, it tells you about the terror of the Lord. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. 
but we are made manifest unto the most high and our trust also made manifest in your conscience okay so knowing that we're serious about this and knowing that the terror of the lord man you better be persuaded okay to come out of your sin and iniquity before you get judged all right so ultimately that's going to do it for the lesson like i said it'd be real short just just a little commentary on uh, that news piece that we saw, man, you got to be very, very careful out there, all right? Because the Lord is, is getting ready to do a number on this place. And when he does it, he's going to definitely put a lot of jakes to death, all right? That's the Lord's judgment. All right, I'll end it right there. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Shalom.